Anastasia Chatska. I'm a fashion designer, pattern maker, and sewing educator. And I'm so happy you're here sewing along with me today. Welcome to Sewing Anastasia. And today we are going to pattern draft a sloper bodice. The exciting part about creating a sloper bodice is that once we pattern draft this bodice, we can use it over and over and over again to create awesome designs because this is going to fit your body perfectly and you can base so many other designs off of it. This is the foundation for pattern drafting. So you need this bodice so that way you can pattern draft all kinds of dresses and bodices and everything. So follow along and I'm gonna show you how to make your sloper bodice so that way you can start pattern drafting and designing your own wardrobe. Even if you're not gonna pattern draft one of these, this process is so interesting. So make sure you follow all the way to the end so you can see what the end result is and I'm gonna sew it up. So we're gonna go from flat pattern to fitted bodice. So cool! Before we start pattern drafting, you just need to gather a few supplies. So let's go over them. You're going to need an L square. Doesn't have to have the curve on it, just any old L square will do. You're going to need a two inch clear ruler. You're also gonna need a pencil. I'm gonna be using a colored pencil today so you can see it. You're going to need your awl. You're going to need your pinwheel. And you're also gonna need a French curve. So grab all your supplies and let's start pattern drafting. You're also gonna need 20 very specific body measurements. And that is why this sloper bodice is going to fit you perfectly. And if you need to know how to take all of those measurements, make sure you check out my video on that. There should be a card up here and there will also be a link in the description. So make sure you check out the video on how to take all of your personal body measurements for your bodice. This process can take a little bit of time, but it is totally worth it and rewarding. So now the fun part starts. We are going to create a flat map of the body using all of those measurements. And we are gonna connect all the lines together so that way we end up with a finished sloper bodice. And every time I create a line on the paper, I'm going to reference it with a letter. And I'm also gonna tell you what measurement I'm using. So whether it's my front length or my shoulder measurement. So that way you can reference your chart of measurements and do the same thing and follow along with me. So let's do it. Let's put these 20 measurements to the paper and make a paper version of our bodice. We're going to be pattern drafting the front bodice first, so make sure you're using all the measurements for your front bodice and not your back bodice by accident. Sometimes that's easy to do because they're written right next to each other. The first measurement is going to be the full length and the points on that are going to be A to B. First thing you wanna do is place your L square on the paper and I want you to draw the corner down here and label it B. Now what we're gonna do is create our full length measurement, which is gonna be B all the way up to A. Now my full length measurement is going to be 17 inches. So I'm gonna start here at B and go all the way up to 17 inches and put A. And now I have my full length measurement. Next, we're gonna create the across shoulder measurement, which is gonna go from A to C. Make sure you have your L square positioned like this. And it's gonna be your cross shoulder measurement minus an eighth of an inch, and mine is going to be seven and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna go from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a quarter, and label that C. As you can see, I changed up my ruler. That last one was giving us a lot of reflection, and I want you guys to be able to see. Okay, so now we're gonna do B to D. So we're gonna start at B and work our way up to D, which is going to be your center front length. So my center front length is 14. And we're not adding or subtracting anything to this, so just your true center front length. So we're gonna go up to 14, and we're going to put D. And now we are going to square out four inches from D. Next, we're gonna create our bust arc, and that's gonna be from B all the way over to the left to E, and that's gonna be your bust arc measurement plus a quarter of an inch. So my bust arc measurement is gonna be nine and three quarters. So B all the way over to nine and three quarters, and then we're gonna go ahead and place E. Now we're not done. We are gonna square up 11 inches from E. So we're gonna place the bottom of our ruler from B to E, so we get a nice square up. 
And now we're gonna come up 11 inches and square down. Now we're going to square down three inches from C. Next is our shoulder slope measurement plus an eighth of an inch. We start at B and our G ends up on this line that got squared down from C. So this one can be a little tricky. So let's say your measurement was 16 and a half. That means you need to move it until 16 and a half runs into that squared down line. Let's say it was 18. So you need to move the ruler until 18 runs into that squared down line. So my measurement for this is going to be 17 and an eighth. So I'm gonna go ahead and find 17 and an eighth and make sure it's running into the squared down line from C. And now I can draw my line. And we're gonna label this G. Next, we're going to do the bust depth, which is going to be on the shoulder slope line. And we're gonna go from G down to H with our bust depth measurement. Now my bust depth measurement is eight and three quarters. So we're gonna come down eight and three quarters. And then we're going to label that H and that's gonna be our bust depth. Next, we wanna create J, which is gonna be on the center front line. So what we need to do is take our L square and make sure it touches center front and it's also running through H and then this is gonna give us J. So we square out here and then this gives us J. Next is the shoulder length. We are going to start with G. Um, our end point is going to be I. So my shoulder length is five. So that means I start with G and I move my L square until it touches the across shoulder. And now I can go ahead and go G and I can put I here. And then while you're here, you also want to square down to run into the D intersection. So now we've got our I here and we've got our D here, which is our center front length. So basically what we've done is we've created our neckline here, which we'll use a French curve with later to smooth out. So we have our shoulder and now we've got a neckline. Next, we're gonna do the bust span, which is gonna be on the J line. So we're gonna go from J all the way over to K, which is gonna end with your bust span measurement plus a quarter of an inch. So mine's gonna be three and five eighths. So we're gonna start at J here on the line and come over to three and five eighths, all intersecting right here. We're getting a mess here in the middle, aren't we? And now this is also going to be K. Now your measurement could end up way over here, it could end up over here. This really depends on the bust that you have. So this measurement can kind of be all over for different people. Next, we're going to create D to L, which is a movement down. And to get this measurement, you need to measure D to J and divide in half. So mine's six and a half, so we are gonna get three and a quarter. And we are gonna label this one L. Now we're gonna use your cross chest measurement plus a quarter of an inch, and we're gonna start at L. Make sure you have your L squared lined up with center front. And now we're gonna create M. So we're gonna go from L to M. So mine is gonna be six and three quarters. So we're gonna draw a line all the way over to six and three quarters. And we are gonna label this M. We are, oh, my lines are not showing up very well. Let's get a new marker. Next, we're going to extend M vertically an inch on the top and an inch on the bottom of from that horizontal line. So it should look something like that. Next, grab your dart placement measurement and we are gonna mark it from B over, labeling it F. So mine is going to be two and seven eighths. So I'm gonna come over two and seven eighths and I'm going to label this F. We are also gonna come down three sixteenths of an inch, which is so small. And then we're going to put a little line there. There we go. Next is our new strap measurement plus an eighth of an inch. My measurement's gonna be 16 and seven eighths. So we start at I and then we're gonna intersect with this line we drew up from E and we're gonna label it N. So 16 and seven eighths. 
So I need to make sure that 16 and 7 eighths is intersecting with E, which is right here. But I have my ruler backwards, so let's turn it around. Okay, so 16 and 7 eighths. So 16 and 7 eighths is right there. Make sure your rulers don't move around on you. They love moving. Okay, so 16 and 7 eighths, and we are gonna draw a line from I all the way down to our side seam that we have here, and we are gonna label it N. So now you need your side length measurement, and we're going to start at N, and we are going to end with an O up here. So my side length is gonna be seven and three quarters, so we're gonna start at N, come up seven and three quarters, and I can mark this one O. And that is our side length. Next, we're gonna draw out an inch and a quarter from N and create P. But I like to measure out an inch and a quarter and actually draw a substantial line because our next measurement needs to run into this line. So I'm just measuring out an inch and a quarter from N and then I'm going to just come straight over from N and put P. Now we need to draw a new side length line reaching over to P. So my side length was seven and three quarters, so I want seven and three quarters to run into this line. And it looks like I need to move up my P just a little bit. No big deal, that's why we double checked our measurement and my new marker. So now we're gonna draw a line from O to your side length measurement, making sure it's touching this line here that we named P. So now we have a new side length that's over an inch and a quarter. Next, we're gonna draw a line from P to F. Now there's no specific measurement, you just need to make these two points touch and connect them. Next, we're gonna mark our waist arc, which is gonna be P to Q, which is gonna be on this P to F line. But first, we need to do our waist arc measurement plus a quarter of an inch minus your dart placement measurement. And that's gonna give me four and an eighth. So I'm gonna go over from P, four and an eighth of an inch, and go ahead and put Q. Next, we're gonna draw our dart legs, and we're going to line up K with Q and draw a line. And now we're gonna line up K with F and draw another line. And now we have dart legs, but we wanna come down 5 eighths of an inch and redraw them. So center 5 eighths of an inch down, right here, and then go ahead and redraw your dart legs. And we wanna do this so that way the tip of our dart is not going to be right at the tip of our bust. We want it just a little bit lower. So now we have our dart legs drawn in. Next, we're gonna mark R, which is going to be 3 16 of an inch down from Q. So we're just gonna put a little mark here and put R. Next, grab your French curve and draw a nice smooth line from N to R. This is gonna give us a nice little line for our waist. And now we're gonna go from F to B as well. So make sure you're starting at that 3 16 of an inch below that bust arc measurement and blend in with B. So you can see we've drawn these two little curved spots at the waist. Now it's time to draw the armhole. First thing we need to do is make sure that we are squaring out from O about an inch. And now you wanna grab your French curve. You want your French curve to touch all of these points. So we want it to touch G, we want it to touch M, and we want it to touch O. You don't want your French curve to drop below the line you just drew from O. So we want it to touch all of these lines that we have here. When it looks like it does, Let's go ahead and draw it. And now we have an armhole curve. Next, we're gonna use our French curve to draw our neckline. When we draw our neckline, we wanna make sure that the French curve is coming in about an eighth of an inch from this line here that's coming down to the neckline here. 
So line up your French curve so that it is on the D and it's touching the I and it's coming in at just an eighth of an inch on this line that's coming down, intersecting the two. And now we are going to draw our neckline. Okay, now the front bodice is done except the seam allowance, but it's time to move on to the back. So how's it going so far? Isn't this an interesting process? I know I love it. And if you're enjoying this video and the process, make sure you subscribe to Sew Anastasia and hit that notification bell because I put out new videos every single week. So much sewing content just for you. Are you excited to see this final sloper bodice all sewn up on the dress form fitting beautifully? I know I am. So let's get back to pattern drafting. Now we're on to the back bodice, so make sure you're using all your back bodice measurements. The first one we need is your full length measurement, and we're going to mark the bottom of our L square first, and we're gonna label it B, and we're gonna go up to A, and my back full length is 17, so I'm gonna draw all the way up. Ooh, don't let your L square move on you. I'm gonna draw all the way up to 17, and we're going to label it A. Next, we're gonna draw the across shoulder measurement. And for me, it's gonna be seven and a half inches. And this is gonna give us our A to C. So we're gonna start at A and we're gonna work over to the right to get C and we're going to stop at seven and a half for me. And now I've got C. And now we are going to square down three inches from C. So flip your ruler, make sure it's lined up so it's squared, draw down three inches and we're good. Next is our center back length. Mine's gonna be 16, and we're gonna measure from B up to get to D. So B to D is your center back length. So 16, and we're gonna mark this one D. Next measurement is going to be our back arc measurement plus three quarters of an inch. And this is gonna be B over to the right to create E. So B to E is your back arc measurement plus three quarters of an inch. And for me, that's gonna be eight and a half. So we're gonna draw from B over to eight and a half, and then we're going to put E. There's a second part to E, and that is just squaring up about 11 inches. And I said about 11 inches because it really doesn't matter. It could be 10, 11, it could be 12. Basically, we just need this line here as a reference point for later on. Next is our back neck measurement plus an eighth of an inch. And it's gonna go from A to F. So A, marking on the across shoulder line F, and mine's gonna be three and an eighth. Next is our shoulder slope plus an eighth of an inch. So my measurement is gonna be 16 and 5 eighths. We are going to start at B and we want 16 and 5 eighths to hit that square down from C. So 16 and 5 eighths right there. And now we are going to draw the shoulder slope line right through our pattern. So B all the way up to 16 and 5 eighths. And now we have G. Next, we're gonna square out from D four inches. Next, we're gonna draw our shoulder length measurement, which is going to start at F. So it's gonna be your shoulder length measurement plus a half of an inch. And we want to position the ruler so that the point of the L square is going to be at F, and then we want the ruler to line up with G over here, and then we are going to draw five and a half inches. There we go. And then that is going to be my H. Now, depending on your shoulder length, it may pass through G or it may not pass through G. So depending on your shoulder length, you could have it way up here, you could have it way down here. This really depends on how broad your shoulders are. Now I want you to line up your L square with your F to your H. Make sure it's nice and lined up. And then we're gonna draw a right angle from the F to the D. Next, we're gonna mark our dart placement, which is going to be B to I, and we're gonna mark I on the back arc line measurement. So from B over, I'm gonna mark two and seven eighths, and this here is going to be my I, which is my dart placement. Also, I'm not just saying dart placement, so that is a measurement that you took. So make sure you're using your dart placement measurement, because this measurement is different for everyone. 
Next, you need your waist arc measurement. Now you're gonna take your waist arc measurement plus an inch and a half for our dart intake plus a quarter inch of ease. So waist arc measurement plus an inch and three quarters essentially. My measurement's gonna come out to seven and three eighths. So I'm gonna measure from B over to J. So I'm gonna go seven and three eighths. So now we wanna mark the center of the dart that we have here. We have an inch and a quarter dart because that's what we gave our bodice. You could give it a bigger or smaller one if you wanted. And so we're gonna mark from I over five eighths. So right there in the center. And we're gonna label that one L. Now we're gonna mark down from J, three sixteenths of an inch. And this is gonna help with the shape of our waist when we shape it up later. Now grab your side length measurement, and we are gonna go from M, that little point where we just marked down the 3 16ths of an inch, and we are gonna run into this E line wherever your measurement is. So mine is seven and three quarters, so I wanna move my ruler until seven and three quarters is on that line. So now I have seven and three quarters running into E over here. So we're going to draw up seven and three quarters. And we are going to mark this N. Next, we need to find where our O measurement is, which is going to be the tip of our dart. And in order to find where we wanna put the tip of our dart, we are gonna square up from L. Now, the measurement you need is going to be your side length measurement minus one inch. So mine was seven and three quarters, my side length. So I'm gonna make this squared up line six and three quarters. And then this here is going to be O. Now we're gonna draw on our dart legs. We're gonna draw from I to O. And then we're gonna draw from K to O. And now we have our center back dart. And now what we wanna do is extend our dart leg an eighth of an inch from I and an eighth of an inch from K. So we're just gonna extend those down. Now what you wanna do is grab your French curve and we're going to blend from I to B from that little eighth of an inch that you just drew down. And then we're gonna blend from K to M. Next, we need to find the center of our shoulder so that way we can draw a dart out the shoulder. So measure F to H, so I've got five and a half. So I'm gonna mark over two and three quarters and put a mark here. And then I'm going to label that P. Now we need to draw our dart length for the shoulder. So we're gonna line up our ruler with P and O down here with the other dart. And we're going to draw down three inches and stop. And this three inch dart line here, you did not measure that anywhere. That is just like a standard to have a three inch shoulder dart. So since we left a half inch for a dart at the shoulder, what we wanna do is measure over a quarter inch from P on the right of it, and then also on the left of it. And now that you have those little dart leg measurements there, a quarter inch out on both sides of P, we are going to line up those little marks and bring it down to that three inch mark that we put for the end of the dart. And now you'll end up with a shoulder dart. Next, you wanna extend your dart leg on each little spot, just an eighth of an inch. And now what we're gonna do is blend from that eighth of an inch over to H on the right hand side. And then we're gonna blend from F to that eighth inch on the other side. You'll notice it just makes the shoulder pop up a little, so that's gonna give us some nice movement and shaping in the shoulder. Now what we're gonna do is find our cross back point. So what we need to do is measure our center back length and divide in four. So mine is going to be four, so I'm gonna measure from D down and I'm going to put a mark. So I'm gonna measure down to four and I'm gonna put a mark. And then we're gonna label this one S. Now you need your cross back measurement and you're gonna add a quarter inch to it and you're gonna line up your L square 
with the full length for the back right at the S and come all the way over. And now mine is gonna be seven. And we're gonna label this measurement over here, T, where our across back ends. Now what we're gonna do is take the tip of the T measurement and we're gonna measure up an inch and a half with our right angle. We're gonna flip our ruler and we're gonna do the same thing for the bottom of this T measurement. We are gonna come down an inch and a half. So we're almost done. Next, what we need to do is draw the curve for the neck and the armhole. I'm gonna start with the neckline here. So we want to be three-eighths of an inch out from that center point there, and then line up your French curve with that, and then go ahead and draw your back neck. There we go, so we've got a back neck, beautiful. Now what we wanna do is take our French curve, and we're gonna bring it over here to the side. So what we wanna do is we wanna line up our N, our T, and our H. So let's see if we can get our N with the bottom of our French curve, lining up our French curve into this bottom line of the T that we drew. And then let's see if we can get it to come out here to the H as well. Okay, we are looking real good right there. So we've got it touching this line that we extended an inch and a half. We've got it at the N, then we've got it up here at the H. Okay, check it out. We have a back sloper bodice. This is so exciting. Look at this. We have a front and a back sloper bodice all pattern drafted out. And we created this from those 20 measurements that we took of our body. This is so cool. So now what we need to do is add seam allowance and then we're gonna cut it out and sew it up and see how it turned out. So keep following along to see the final results. To add our seam allowance, we're going to use our two inch clear ruler. Again, I'm going to be using that Sharpie, but do not use a Sharpie. I just want you to see the line, so I'm going to be using a Sharpie. Make sure you're using a nice sharp pencil. So let's add that seam allowance. And the armholes and the curves can be super tricky, but I've got some great pointers for that. So when you're using a two inch clear ruler, it has all the little eighth inch squares in it, up to two inches. So what we're gonna do for our half inch seam allowance is line up our seam with the half inch on the ruler. So all the seam allowances are always half inch unless you're doing a neckline that's going to be a quarter. So all you need to do is line up your straight line with that half inch on the ruler and go ahead and just drag your pencil along that. And now you have a perfect half inch outside of that side seam right here. Now what we wanna do is draw the half inch for the waist, but we've got a few things here we need to do. We need to extend the side seam a little longer so that way, when we go ahead and draw our half inch in the waist here, you're going to end up with these right angled corners. So you want these right angled corners at all of your spots so that way they line up when you're sewing them. Now you'll notice the waist is starting to curve. So what do you do when you have a curve with a straight ruler? You're gonna go ahead and drag your pencil until this line moves off the curve. And then you're gonna move your ruler until it lines up again and just draw a little more and then just keep moving it. Just making sure that your ruler is always on the half inch. And then when you pull it back, you'll end up with the perfect curve that's mimicking your existing line that's there. Now that we've done a straight seam and a little bit of a curve at the waist, I'm gonna show you how to fold the darts so that way you get a perfect dart underlay. And this is really important for sewing up the dart, making sure that it lays the proper direction. So I want you to grab your ruler and your awl, and we are gonna drag the awl along the dart leg that's closest to center front. If you're doing the back, it would be the dart leg that's closest to center back. So I'm just going to lightly drag my awl across the paper, make sure you're not ripping it through. And now what we're gonna do is take this dart leg and we're going to fold it upwards. And now we're going to match it on the other dart leg that's there. So we're just going to fold it over as if we're sewing it together and see how this gets all bunchy in here. You really need to make sure that this is flat like it would be when you're sewing it. So go ahead and just flatten this out, make it nice and smooth. Make sure you're lining up both of your dart legs. There we go, that looks nice and smooth for me. 
Now you could tape this or just hold it with your hand really well. And now what I want you to do is take your pinwheel. And now what we're gonna do is take our pinwheel and we're gonna draw through the waist seam that we originally drew there. So watch what happens, this is so cool. So we're drawing through the waist and now we're going to open it up and now I have all of these little mini dots here. And now we are going to trace those because that is our new waistline shape for the dart underlay that's here. You might be wondering, what is a dart underlay? Well, a dart underlay is that excess fabric that's between the dart legs. Now that we have the proper shape for our dart underlay, let's go ahead and trace it out and add seam allowance to it. Now what I'm gonna do is line up my ruler with all those little dots that are in the paper, the little perforations. I'm gonna go ahead and draw right over them, blending into the existing waistline that's there. And I'm gonna do this on both sides. And now this pointed shape here is the new shape at the waist that is part of the dart. So this here is all of our dart underlay that I was talking about. And now we can just continue drawing our half inch seam allowance all along the waist. You wanna extend the center front line. And then at center front here, we are not adding any seam allowance because that is gonna be on fold. We don't wanna seam at our center front. Next, we're gonna do the neck, the shoulder, and the armhole. And I'm gonna show you how to get that nice, perfect curve on those sharp curves in the armhole and the neck. And then we're done tracing seam allowance for the front bodice. So remember, the neck seam allowance is a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna find quarter inch on my ruler, line it up with the line that I drew for my neckline, and go ahead and trace this out. Now notice that my ruler is nice and vertical. It's not on an angle at all because I wanna end up with a really nice, sharp, right angle for my seam allowance up here. So we're gonna draw until the ruler is moving off the curve, change the ruler, Keep working your way around this curve. And then same thing for center front. You want this to be nice and straight. You want a nice right angle there. There we go. So now we have a nice smooth curve that's mimicking the curve that we already have there for the neckline. And now what you wanna do is extend your shoulder line so that way we do get a nice little square at the corner. So on both ends, I'm gonna extend those. And now the shoulder's so easy because that's a half inch straight line. We're just lining it up with the half inch on the ruler and dragging it across our paper. Looks like I need to extend this one a little bit. No big deal. There we go. Okay, now we are on to the armhole. Same thing for the armhole. Just make sure we extend that side seam line that's there. And now we're gonna work our way all the way around the armhole. Just moving that ruler if it moves off the curve so that way we can keep the same curve in our seam allowance as we have for our sewing line. And there we go. We have a complete front bodice with all of the seam allowance. So remember, half inch everywhere except the neckline, which is a quarter, and center front is on fold, so center front gets no seam allowance. Now grab your paper scissors and let's cut this bodice out. Now make sure you're cutting on the outside of your seam allowance line. Ta-da! Your bodice should look something like this. Now that we have this one all complete, let's go ahead and do the exact same thing to the back bodice. But center back gets a half inch because we are gonna put a zipper up center back. You're gonna use all the same techniques on the back bodice as we used on the front bodice, including how I folded the dart to get the dart underlay. Seam allowances all a half inch except the neckline, which is a quarter, and center back gets that half inch as well because we're gonna put a zipper up center back. So let's do it. And then we are gonna sew this up and check out our fit.
Now that we have all of the seam allowance on the back bodice, let's cut it out. Voila, here we are. How exciting. We pattern drafted a front and a back sloper. We added our seam allowance and now it's time to test them out. This is the exciting part where you get to sew up the mock-up and try it on and see how it fits. And then from there you can make adjustments if needed. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out and sew them up and we'll try it on the dress form and see what it looks like. I'm gonna sew this up real fast and try it on the dress form, but if you need help or advice on all the details of sewing up the sloper bodice, no worries, I'm gonna have a video on that very soon. And when it comes out, I'll make sure I put a link in the description and a card up here for you. So let's sew it up and try it on the dress form. I am so excited to check this out on the dress form. So just real quick, I totally forgot to tell you, you need to take your awl and push it through the tip of your dart. So that way you have a little drill hole there where you can put your chalk in. So that way you know where the tip of your dart is when you're sewing. And then you're going to need your pattern notcher to notch out the legs of your dart. So let me show you how to do that real quick. And if you don't have a pattern notcher, no worries. You can just use your scissors to cut out a little snippet at the bottom of the dart leg. So you wanna take your awl and go ahead and push it right through the tip of your dart. And then you can see it just creates a little spot there. So that way, when you're marking it with chalk, the chalk's gonna go through and end up on your fabric, or maybe you're marking the tip of your darts with an awl too, so you have that hole prepared. Now what we wanna do is notch the bottom of the dart legs here. Just make sure you're extending your dart leg to the bottom of your waist seam allowance, and then take the notcher and just click it and it's gonna create this little oval shape at the bottom, which is giving you a nice little notch at the bottom of your dart leg. Hence, it's called the notcher. You wanna repeat this process with all of your darts. Okay, now let's actually go sew up that sloper. Okay, let's do it. Let's sew this bodice together. We did it, we are finished sewing the sloper bodice. We have our sloper bodice all sewn up and I have it on the dress form that I took the measurements from. So check it out. We took all of those measurements, made a flat pattern and sewed it up and now we have this 3D bodice. It is a replica of this dress form bodice right here. The lines match up at the princess lines for the darts, which is amazing. That's exactly what we were trying to do. The neckline is the actual shape of the neckline. Our dart points are going right up to the point of the boss. Our armholes are looking great. We have a really nice shoulder that's lining up with our shoulder seam. Our side seam here looks excellent as well. So you can see that's just a little bit below the arm plate once we have our sleeve sewn in because we have that seam allowance there. And then it's going just a little bit past the waist, a half inch because we have seam allowance there. Um, so our side seam is looking great. And now if we turn it around to the back, we have our shoulder darts and then we have our center back zipper in here. And we also have our back darts, which are lining up with our back princess lines. So the darts are looking great lining up with the back princess lines. And then we have the zipper in here so we can get it on and off. And it is just nice and smooth everywhere. This is exactly what you're looking for in your sloper fit. Now, if your sloper turned out too big for you, you can always take it in and adjust your pattern and then sew up another mock-up until you get it just right. And because we are not dress form, sometimes you have to go through multiple fittings to get it just right for you. And that's okay, so don't think you did anything wrong. Also, keep in mind, when we were pattern drafting this, remember when we added a quarter of an inch here, an eighth of an inch there? That all adds up, and that is the ease in the sloper. So if you wanna create a sloper with no ease, in it at all. Just repattern draft your bodice and don't use all of those little plus a quarter, plus an eighth measurements, and then it will be an exact tight replica of your body. 
but this sloper has all of the ease in it already. Isn't this incredible? We took a bunch of measurements, we drew a bunch of lines on paper, and then we ended up with this. We started from nothing and ended up with something. This is so cool. This is the magic of pattern drafting. I absolutely love this process so much. I just think it's so cool and gratifying to be able to create something out of literally nothing. So just think, we did not start with an existing pattern. We created this all on our own with a handful of measurements. We created the bodice to a garment. And this is the foundation for pattern drafting, everything and anything you could imagine that involves a bodice. If you haven't tried creating a sloper bodice yet, you totally should. This process is awesome and rewarding, and you're gonna learn so much along the way. And it's okay if you mess up and fail a few times. It is no big deal. Everybody does. It's totally cool. Don't get frustrated. Just do it again and try again, and then eventually you will get it, and it will be so exciting. Thanks so much for watching Sewing Anastasia today. If you have any questions on pattern drafting the sloper bodice, leave it down below, and I will get back with you as soon as I can. I really hope you enjoyed this video. So if you did, give it a thumbs up, give it some applause, and leave a comment down below about what you learned or what do you think of this. I would love to hear your thoughts. Also, I'd love for you to share this video with your friends who are also interested in sewing or pattern drafting or fashion design, or maybe you just found this super interesting. So make sure you share it with your friends. And don't forget to add me on Instagram, and Facebook, and Twitter, and TikTok, and all those other social media websites so we can stay connected and creative together. And if you've just created a sloper bodice or anything else, I would love to see it and share it with everyone. So make sure you tag me at Sewing Anastasia so I can share your creativity to keep everyone inspired. And don't forget, I teach sewing classes, pattern drafting classes, and draping classes in my studio in Chicago, Illinois. And I also teach these virtually as well. So check those out at SewingAnastasia.com. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.